All right, our third speaker for this section, and he's the last speaker for this section also, uh, is uh, uh, Dr. Pua Junhui, uh, who is the CTO and co-founder of Insectica uh, Singapore. So a uh, very brief introduction. Junhui graduated from the National University of Singapore with a bachelor's degree in life sciences with highest distinction. He co-founded Insect, he, he co the Insector in 2018 and spearheaded the development of Black Soldier Fry by biomaterials for the company. He actively collaborates with researcher both internationally and locally on the application of this biomaterial. So let's welcome Junwei. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ji, for uh, the introduction. Uh, just like Shiva, I do not have a PhD, uh, just a bachelor. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, my colleague uh, Kai, she's also the co-founder of Insecta, she's also here. And so uh, together we might take questions later. Hi. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon once again. Uh, my name is Junwei and I'm the co-founder and CTO of Insecta. Thank you very much for tuning in to my presentation. And I'm honored to be invited by Dr. Kang to present at this conference. As our company name suggests, uh, Insecta exists to tap on two undervalued resources waiting at our fingertips, insects and food waste. By marrying deep tech and nature, we develop processes to extract precious biomaterials from the black soldier fly the insect industry's solution to waste valorization. And these biomaterials go into solutions, combating viruses like COVID-19, powering the growing wearable electronics industry. And they can also help people heal faster after surgery. Next slide, please. So many people uh, would have known by now about black soldier flies. For those who haven't, they are an insect being spotlighted for their amazing ability to consume food waste and turn it into useful products for the agriculture industry, uh, such as animal feed and fertilizer. So the fertilizer is in the form of the fresh or the insect poop. Some of you may have even heard of how such farms are popping up all over the world with some mega farms already capable of handling more than 50 tons of food waste per day. So. Black soldier flies are very good at consuming waste and growing quickly, as uh, Shiva has already mentioned. But the black soldier fly industry is also facing a major obstacle, and that is how to compete with the value and price of other types of animal and pet feed. So far, hardly any farm has managed to achieve price parity with fish meal, and uh, insect fresh will only ever sell for so much. At Insecta, we recognize that this little insect can be worth a lot more. We've developed technology that allows us to extract high value biomaterials destined for the pharmaceutical, bioelectronics and personal care industries. What's more, we complement, not compete with existing black soldier fly farms with raw materials sourced from byproducts of their processes. So as they continue to make our agricultural systems more circular with black soldier fly derived animal feeds and fertilizers, we work alongside them to increase the value of this growing and nascent industry. We do this through an integrated biorefinery, which takes in unwanted insect components. So only the un unwanted insect components, and we subject them to a series of mechanical uh, chemical and biological steps in which melanin, chitosan, and feed additives are produced. Now, the chitosan industry is actually quite mature, and many listeners to this presentation would be familiar with this polysaccharide. Chitosan is manufactured from chitin, which is typically derived from the exoskeletons of marine crustaceans. Where we differ from conventional processes is in the sustainable production of chitin and chitosan. Instead of producing wastewater that needs to be heavily treated before discharge, 
Our processes recapture the minerals and proteins that are found in the waste stream or the wastewater, leaving behind discharge that does not need any further treatment. This is why we produce an animal feed additive that is very high in soluble calcium salts. Also, our process produces melanin in unprecedented quantities. And because melanin is quite a novel biomaterial, I would like to spend some time discussing its various applications. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, here is a very nice video done by Channel News Asia that serves as a nice uh, opener to the users of Kytosan and melanin uh, before I dive into more details on these biomaterials. So let's see if we can get the video to work. Uh, it works. So just trying to get the volume up. I'm so sorry, guys. Let me share that again with the sound. Share your computer sound. agriculture. In agriculture, chitosan is used to promote seed growth and to help plants fight fungal infections. In medicine, it's used in bandages to reduce bleeding, and its antibacterial qualities make it useful for preventing infections in wounds. Because it's biocompatible, meaning it's completely safe in our bodies, it's also being researched as an efficient way to deliver drugs to specific locations. Chitosan is typically refined from chitin, which comes from the shells of crustaceans. But the important thing to understand is that it comes from a not so sustainable source. People can say that it comes from waste because shrimp shells and crab shells are waste. But it is still a consumption of marine resources and we know that when people make chitosan, they can actually harvest marine resources specifically for this purpose. Junwei is working on a patented process that uses black soldier flies, a much more sustainable source. The other star product that could be extracted from the fly is melanin. In the biomaterial industry, melanin has been given the nickname black gold. And that doesn't only refer to its value, like it's worth a few hundred dollars a gram at the moment, but also its potential users. Because melanin is biocompatible, it can one day be used in electronics meant to be inserted into the human body without the fear of heavy metals leaching out. Another use for melanin, which is very, very promising, is where it can help with CT scans as well as MRI scans. And one more huge use of melanin is its ability to diagnose and treat certain cancers. Okay. So I'll talk a little bit about melanin, or more specifically, eumelanin, which is the type of melanin that we extract. So eumelanin is a black pigment that colors our hair and skin, but it is more than a simple pigment. It is also found in certain parts of the brain, and those amongst us who have worked with live insects uh, will know that melanization is stimulated when many insect species are wounded. So melanin does, just, does not just protect our skin from UV radiation. It clearly has a role to play in immunity as well. Also, since the 1970s, melanin has been investigated for its electronic properties, such as its ability to store energy within its redox active site groups. In 2016, a widely publicized paper by the Bettinger Group at Carnegie Mellon University promised to produce melanin-based edible batteries, which can power devices that are meant to be introduced into the body for several hours before completely disintegrating without any toxic effects to humans. Since then, a lot of attention has been focused on using melanin in supercapacitors. Uh, next slide, yes. Which are energy storage devices that store electrical energy through electrostatic attraction. When melanin is introduced into the electrode material of a supercapacitor, it helps to increase the energy density because it can help to store additional electrochemical energy through its redox active site groups. This phenomenon is known as pseudocapacitance and it is now quite an active area of research. By using melanin as a, not yet, a previous slide, yeah, by using melanin as a coating, 
on carbon paper electrodes, uh, the Santato group, whom we work with, were able to fabricate printed flexible supercapacitors that have the promise to power small wearable devices with extremely fast charging time. Okay, next slide. One problem with melanin is that the resistance is quite high. So although it can store energy, the conductivity is not ideal. But the, the Pazella group in the University of Naples, uh, they managed to produce extremely conductive melanin thin films through a thermal annealing process. And at a remarkable conductivity of 318 Siemens per second, it is actually well within the range for use in bioelectronics. Next slide, please. Because melanin can conduct electricity, it can be used in organic electrochemical transistors or OECTs for short. And a few years ago, the Meredith group fabricated such a transistor uh, using melanin and P.PSS. This kind of OECT could serve as the communication bridge between electronics and the biological environment because it can read or even write biological signals through electricity. So OECTs can be used in all kinds of bioelectronics, such as sensors that monitors our vitals. Next slide, please. Over here at Insecta, our black soldier fly melanin paves the way for circular and cost-effective source uh, for this expen expensive biomaterial. Here you will see the first black soldier fly melanin supercapacitor uh, made with Insecta's melanin. It's not a perfect example, but just like a battery, it stores and releases a charge. So melanin's flexibility and biocompatibility makes it highly suitable to power devices we may one day wear or even put inside our bodies. Moving away from organic electronics, melanin has been found to promote the differentiation and proliferation of osteoblasts, which are stem cells that differentiate into bone cells. So this was done by uh, this uh, Korean group. Uh, and they did a melanin extract from the black chicken. So, you know, um, in Asian cultures, uh, we, our, our mothers always uh, buy the black chicken. It's completely black. The skin is black, feathers are black, bones are black. And um, they actually boil it and cook soup for us. And it's supposed to be good for our bone health. Um, so this Korean group, they extracted melanin from the black chicken and they showed that actually it promotes proliferation or, and differentiation of osteoblast cells. So these are again stem cells that can differentiate into bone cells. It is this discovery uh, that inspired a collaboration with one of the academic teams I previously mentioned. We actually 3D printed a regenerative bio scaffold with melanin incorporated into it. And this bioscaffold was shown to be extremely bioactive with high levels of alkaline phosphatase detected weeks after introduction to osteoblasts. Uh, and it was only the melanin coated uh, bioscaffolds that managed to do this. So melanin can be a critical component in regenerative bioscaffolds because a lot of these scaffolds currently do not allow for optimal cellular adhesion, differentiation and proliferation. Next slide, please. Now, melanin is also a very powerful chelator uh, or metal binder, uh, with some studies showing that it chelates even better than EDTA, and EDTA is often used as a chelating agent. So Helen Townley's group at Oxford University exploited the chelating ability of melanin to starve cancer cells of iron, uh, leading to cancer cell death. This is because certain types of cancers require large amounts of iron to function. So in the same study, they showed that the same concentration of melanin was completely harmless to normal cells. And uh, in particular, they need to use melanin nanoparticles of a very small size uh, because this small size allows for the accumulation of melanin through the enhanced permeation effect. So, you know, when you have a tumor cell growing in the body, there are abnormal blood vessels forming and these abnormal blood vessels uh, can selectively accumulate very small nanoparticles. Uh, and it just so happens that the melanin that we produce are in an extremely small nanoparticle form. 
Okay, next slide, please. So I've talked a lot about melanin, and now I want to briefly discuss the black soldier fly melanin that we produce and our advantage over other conventional sources of melanin, which are basically squid ink melanin and synthetic melanin. Black soldier fly melanin produced through our patent pending process is obviously highly sustainable, and we are confident that we will be the first to demonstrate the mass production of cost-effective, high-purity melanin through our pilot extraction plant, which will be operational next year. Our melanin also has one unique property. It is completely water-soluble. You might have seen in the video just now uh, where I was dissolving some of our melanin in water, and it is this water solubility that has led to collaborations with many of the researchers whose work I had briefly mentioned just now. In contrast, squid ink melanin and synthetic melanin are not water soluble and they have conventionally been dissolved in alkaline solvents or organic solvents such as dimethyl sulfoxide, which limits their application, especially in the biomedical field. And lastly, our melanin has an antioxidant ability that is as strong as vitamin C but with much better stability. So we know that vitamin C is uh, not very stable uh, when exposed to the environment, but melanin, you can leave it in water and it will be the same with the exact same properties and zero degradation as long as it is held at the correct pH, uh, which is neutral and below. Next slide, please. At Insecta, we are very excited about the melanin we produce. And I would like to take this opportunity to make an appeal to the audience. If you wish to collaborate with us on applications that could benefit from the use of melanin, please feel free to contact me. We have samples readily available with some basic characterization, and we are very keen to validate the utility of our material. The other material that we produce, and the one we produce in much larger quantities, is chitosan. As I mentioned before, chitosan is derived from chitin, found in the exoskeletons of arthropods. When, dissolved such, uh, when, when it is dissolved such that it is positively charged, chitosan has outstanding antimicrobial, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory properties. And that's why it can be used in uh, the applications that are listed here. At Insecta, we are targeting two areas for the use of chitosan. Uh, in pharmaceuticals, our chitosan can be used as a disinfectant. And indeed, we have collaborated with another local startup to produce a completely natural antimicrobial spray that can make surfaces as clean as an operating table. Chitosan can also be used as a drug delivery agent. And the quality of our chitosan is such that toxic heavy metals are not found in it. And this is often found in uh, exceedingly high amounts in the chitosan produced from crab and shrimp shells. We have also demonstrated together with the Singapore University of Technology and Design that our chitosan can be 3D printed with cellulose to create a biocomposite. Also, insect-derived de cosmetics is an up-and-coming field because people want to use sustainable products. Because chitosan has a lower molecular weight than hyaluronic acid, which is a very popular active ingredient, which is actually very similar to chitosan, but with a higher molecular weight. So with the lower molecular weight of chitosan, we believe that it can better penetrate the epidermis of the skin and allow for moisturization from within. Again, these are just some of the users of chitosan, and we invite those interested in using our chitosan to please approach us. In closing, this is a summary slide of my presentation. Uh, I have explained where we fit into the overall framework of the black soldier fly industry, how we intend to add tremendous value to it, and I've also given an overview of the biomaterials we produce and what they can do. Again, we are very interested to work with other parties for applications of our biomaterials, and it is my sincere hope that one day, insects will not just feed the world, but power and heal the world as well. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm looking forward to any questions. Okay, so there's no question in the audience. Uh, okay, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Okay, okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good uh, 
good project and uh, yeah, you extract the melanin and catechin from the black, so fly so, black soldier fly. So my know uh, the yield of the melanin and catechin. Mm -hmm. So for example, one kg dry weight of the fly. Yeah. Oh, how many grams you can extract? Okay, so uh, first of all, it's from the certain components of the fly. So we don't use the whole fly. Uh, it's very important to understand that we actually take unwanted insect components from the black soldier fly industry. So they do the refining of their protein and their lipids, uh, but we take the excess uh, exoskeletons. The yield of chitin is typically between 15 to 20 percent, according to our uh, investigations. And when you convert it to chitosan, you lose about a third. Uh, because you're cleaving off acetyl groups, the molecular weight will decrease. The yield of melanin is uh, 1 percent, uh, which sounds very low. But if you consider the fact that uh, this material that we use is available in exceedingly abundant quantities. We are talking about tons of it per day. We actually have the ability to produce uh, melanin on an unprecedented scale. So uh, I know that Dr. Kung, you are a fermentation specialist. So uh, you might be familiar with uh, how some other companies are producing uh, fungal melanin. Yes. Yes. So fungal melanin uh, to date, the yield uh, can actually be pretty decent. The problem is that it takes 30 days uh, to grow and produce the melanin, according to at least the data that I'm uh, familiar with, uh, with a yield of one gram per liter. So not bad, but we believe that we can produce it much faster and in much larger quantities. Um, it's also important to note, and there is another question here from Laura, um, Oh, sorry, I, I thought that the uh, question was about the difference between, I'll answer anyway, about the difference between uh, black soldier fly melanin and fungal melanin. And that is when you extract fungal melanin, it's very difficult to separate the proteins from the melanin. They both dissolve at high pH. Uh, that's why we believe that our melanin is much purer and we have uh, characterized and analyzed the melanin in various ways. Uh, working with collaborators in both the organic electronics and uh, the uh, biomedical field. And they really like our melanin, particularly because of the water solubility. So the question here is, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Kung, did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank okay. you. So, Laura's question here is, uh, why solubility of black soldier fly versus other melanins uh, is different? So. The honest answer is we do not quite know, uh, but we have some guesses and we have uh, two uh, leading hypotheses. So the first is that uh, the molecular weight of our melanin is extremely small. Uh, we do not know why, perhaps uh, it's not packaged into melanosomes, um, but we know that the, the molecular weight is extremely small. So a collaborator took a uh, transmission uh, electron micron that was something like five nanometers in size that is uh, extremely extremely small so that could be one reason uh, why the solubility is so high in water uh, the other reason is a little bit more complex and i think i won't delve into it but it has to do with uh, possible uh, biochemical modifications that are already present uh, in the melanin when we extract it Okay, Any, uh, there's one question here. Um, so the, the question is why solubility of black soldier fly uh, fly is versus melanin is different. So I think yeah. you might have answered that question. Then maybe yeah, you repeat yeah. it again. I, I answered that question. Uh, so it's uh, basically two leading theories. Uh, one is the molecular weight, and the other one is certain biochemical modifications uh, on the melanin from the black soldier fly. Okay, there's two more questions here. So, has there any
for food certification uh, by SFA. Um, from what we know, so we have done things like uh, ICP analysis. Uh, we have looked at the heavy metals, which is the main issue with uh, Kaitosan, especially those uh, from shrimp shells and crab shells. And our Kaitosan is remarkably low, or even uh, not the, the, the levels of heavy metals are virtually undetectable. So I would say that it's actually much safer. Uh, for melanin, yes, there needs to be there needs to be safety tests done. At present, we have not done these safety tests, uh, but the fact that the antioxidant capability is so high is uh, very promising. Uh, also, we should know that in nature, melanin is used uh, very often as a way to combat disease. Uh, so there are lots of different uh, organisms that produce uh, melanin as a response uh, to wounds, for example. And uh, if we look at traditional Chinese medicine, actually melanin has been used for thousands of years uh, in ancient China as a way to uh, treat wounds. Yeah, interesting. There's one more question. What you say, uh, chitosan is a material known for its, uh, known for long, quite long, but again with limitation in its dissolution that requires acidic media. Are there challenges in using them in cosmetic, etc.? Yes, there are always challenges. Uh, the difference is that now uh, the area of cos the cosmetic field is moving very rapidly towards sustainable ingredients. And so where there is a challenge, there are people now more willing to take it on. And I would say that there are also a lot of uh, different things uh, that are already present in a lot of uh, formulations where uh, where uh, you can already use, for example, lactic acid is present in a lot of uh, cosmetics and cosmeceuticals that can already dissolve kytosan. Uh, in the past, people only use acetic acid, you know, vinegar, and that's very, that's very smelly. So people don't like it. But now, uh, you know, it's, it's actually very easy to dissolve kytosan once you go below the pKa, uh, which is uh, actually not, not that acidic at all. Uh, it's quite easy to dissolve it. Okay, we have another question. I would say, uh, thanks for sharing the benefit of melanin from black of your fly. Uh, do you foresee safety or application concern with its five nanometer size due to controversy in nanomaterials? So I think uh, the controversy with nanomaterials is very rapidly uh, becoming uh, a little more answered, a little less questionable, you know, um, especially with uh, the introduction of mRNA vaccines, which uses nanoparticles as well. Um, in organic electronics, obviously, there will not be a concern. And I agree that, you know, if we start to use it in biomaterials, it would need to be investigated uh, for any potential harmful effects. However, we have done, or at least my collaborators have done cell cultures with normal healthy cells. Uh, and, the, and the amount of melanin that can be introduced into the media is actually really very high. Um, so I would say that we are at a very early stage and it's very difficult uh, to answer a lot of these health and safety concerns. Um, and that is something that we have to continue to explore with our collaborators down the road. Yeah, I, I agree that none of the material is, is kind of a, I myself has got some questions on, on that also because uh, this such a tiny material, if it got into the bloodstream and get into the brain, that could be, you know, quite, quite, quite dangerous. So at least the answer that should we say that. In fact, the research from uh, University of Oxford, they are using melanin nanoparticles specifically to be injected into the bloodstream so that it can bioaccumulate naturally uh, at the site of the tumor. 
Um, obviously, they have not done any human trials, uh, but the other trials that they have done do not show any toxic effects. But of course, uh, a lot more work needs to be done in order to validate its potential. Yeah, but a lot of toxic effects, they are chronic. It takes 10, 20 years to you know, emerge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I think uh, we are probably, I think that's probably it. Uh, there's no more question from, from the floor and uh, I myself have no more question. I think that there has been a lot of interest for this topic. I myself find it very illuminating. Uh, I would thank you for a really excellent talk. Um, so with that, uh, for the all, I would like to thank all the three uh, speakers for their great talk. And uh, thank you, and uh, let's see you again sometime.